Hello, today I will solve by using the quadratic formula, and I have the quadratic formula written off to the right hand side. It is useful when we were in the form ax squared plus bx plus c equal to zero. And then we end up solving for x in the quadratic formula, which helps us find the x coordinate of our x intercept if we were to graph it and think of it visually. It helps us find values that would make this equation equal to zero. So essentially, when we first start, we need to determine what a is, what b is, and what c is. Now notice, a is the leading coefficient, b is the coefficient on the x, and c is that constant term. So a would be 12 here, b would be negative 1. The common mistake I see students make is by putting negative 1x, but we do not want to introduce variables in here. And then c would just be negative 6. So a is 12, b is negative 1, and c is negative 6. And now what we do is we start typing into the quadratic formula. So x equals negative b, so I will put negative, but then b is negative 1, and then you can see here that b has went in that spot right there. So we have negative b. Okay, next we will put plus minus, the square root of a bunch of stuff. And the first thing we have here is going to be b squared. So I'm going to put the negative 1 in parentheses and I'm going to square the whole thing. So I'm squaring all of b. So I put it in parentheses to make sure that if there is a negative, that when you square it, you get a positive. Then I have minus 4, and then we have to multiply by a now. So a, a is actually going to go right here, and we saw that a is the value of 12. And then c, I'll mark c right here, c will be multiplied as well. So I'll just make another parentheses, and c we saw was negative 6. And then it's all divided by 2 times a. And a we will mark right here, and a was our value of 12. And then we just start cleaning up. So in that first portion, we have negative times negative 1. A negative times a negative makes a positive, so I'm going to put positive 1. Then I have plus minus, the square root of b squared. And here we had negative 1 all squared, so that would make positive 1. And then we have minus 4 times 12 times negative 6. Now when I see this negative and this negative here, I know that that's going to make a plus. And then I'm going to have to multiply 4 times 12 times 6, and when I multiply all of that out, it actually gives me 288. And then I get to the denominator, and the denominator is 2 times 12, so now I'm dividing everything by 24. So doubling 12, right, 2 dozen is 24. Okay, now I'll keep going, equals 1 plus minus the square root, and within that square root we have 1 plus 288, so that we could do in our head, 289, all divided by 24. Now let's think about this. 1 plus or minus, so what is the square root of 289? Well, 17 squared would actually give you 289, so the square root of 289 is 17. And now we have to take care of that plus minus. So you see here we have a plus minus. Well, we need to think about this as doing 1 plus 17 and then also doing 1 minus 17. So I'm going to split it up into two pieces. I'll do 1 plus 17 over 24 and 1 minus 17 over 24 to make sure that I've accounted for everything. Now I need to add in the numerator first, so that would give me 18 over 24. And then down here I'll subtract in the numerator first, so 1 minus 17 would be negative 16 over 24. Now it looks like I have two solutions here to work with. But what I need to do is think about, okay, 18 and 24, they're both even numbers, so they must have something in common. Well, 2 is in common, that's true, but we could even go a step further and think about it. 6 would go into 18, 
three times, and 6 goes into 24 four times. So 3 fourths would be one of the solutions. And then we have a negative solution. Okay, let's think about it. 16 and 24 is even, so I know at least 2 goes into both. Um, but if you think about 8, 8 goes into 16 twice, and 8 goes into 24 three times. So then we would have two solutions here. x equals 3 fourths, also x equals negative 2 thirds. Both of these make this equation equal to 0. So if you plugged in 3 fourths in for the x's, you would get 0. Or if you plugged in negative 2 thirds into the x's, you would get 0. All right, let's do another one. So solve by using the quadratic formula again. In this example, a is 2, b is negative 5, and c is 2. So then we have x equals negative. We need to put in the b, and b in this example is really negative 5. So I'll just place negative 5 there. Then we have plus minus the square root of b squared. And again, b squared would just be negative 5 all squared. Then minus 4 times a, and a in this example is positive 2, so I'll put positive 2 in there. And then c in this example is also positive 2. Then I'll just place the C in there. It's positive 2. And it's all divided by 2 times A. And we saw a little bit ago that A is really also 2. And we could start multiplying now. So in the first, first part, we have a negative, negative 5. Right? Negative times negative 5 would make a positive 5. So I'll just put 5. Then we have plus minus the square root. In the square root, we have negative 5 all squared. That would become positive 25. Then we have minus 4 times 2 times 2. Well, that would be 4 times 2 is 8 times 2 is 16. And then we have all divided by 2 times 2. 2 times 2 is 4. And then we keep on going. So then I could say equals. So we have 5 plus minus the square root. 25 minus 16. Well, that gives you 9. And then we're dividing everything by 4. And the square root of 9, that's a nice one. It's easier than the square root of 289. Square root of 9 is 3, because 3 squared gives you 9. And then we divide by 4. But we want to be careful here, right? Because of this plus minus, we want to make sure that we're thinking of the positive addition and the subtraction. So I need to do 5 plus 3 divided by 4, and I need to do 5 minus 3 divided by 4 to make sure I've accounted for that plus minus symbol. 5 plus 3 gives you 8, and divide by 4. Well, 4 goes into 8 twice. And then 5 minus 3 is 2 divided by 4. Now 2 and 4, they have 2 in common. 2 goes into 2 once, and 2 goes into 4 twice. So it looks like we have the solutions x equals 2 as a possibility, or we also have x equals 1 half as a possibility. That guarantees, if you look back up here, if you plugged in 2 to check, it would give you 0. And if you plugged in 1 half into the x's, you would also get 0. Thank you for watching my video.